Next speaker is uh, Roger uh, Dingeldein. He's going to talk about uh, Tor and uh, censorship. Uh, please give him a warm uh, round of applause. Okay, hi everybody. Uh, please consider turning your cell phones off for the talk, as we've learned from the front row. Uh, so hi, I'm Roger from the Tor Project. Can you hear me pretty well? Am I too loud, loud enough? Thumbs up, great. Okay, so feel free to uh, ask me questions for the rest of the next three or four days or something. We've got something like five or 10 funded Tor people wandering around here, so we're a growing project and we're all happy to tell you more about Tor. So today's talk is a little bit about what's happened in the past year or so in China and Iran and a bunch of other countries around the world. There seem to be a growing set of countries where censorship is becoming a real problem. It started out, everybody's thinking China and Iran and places like that, but the set of countries, Vietnam, Tunisia, England, Australia, Germany, Venezuela, the list keeps growing and growing of uh, places that are considering censoring their citizens for one reason or another. So there are a lot of things we can talk about. I'm going to try to give you a bunch of different things to think about, and then maybe you can make use of that over the next year or so. So I'll give you a very brief overview of what Tor is. Uh, three or four years ago, I did a talk, it was, I think it was 23C3, it might have been 21C3, on uh, what are we going to do about this censorship thing as it starts to happen. So at that point, I gave a talk about here is our planned design, yeah, it's vaporware, and this year it's, okay, so that stuff we were talking about, we built it, and here's how it actually worked. So I'll give you the brief overview of what Tor is, and then I'll give you a brief overview of what the problem is, what censorship is, what's going on around the world, what sort of problems we need to solve, what sort of designs we need. And then we'll get into the more interesting questions of what's actually happening around the world, what actually happened in Iran, things like that. So Tor is, it's an online system for anonymity. The goal is there are 1,500 relay volunteers around the world, uh, quite a few of them sitting in this room, I hope. And uh, the goal is you can use the Tor network to browse the web or instant message, and somebody watching you locally can't figure out what sites you're going to, and somebody at the destination end can't figure out where you're coming from. So it's open source, freely available. One of the really neat things about Tor is the level of documentation and specs that we provide. We try to describe exactly in an RFC style way how you can build your own Tor client. And that means that uh, several different groups around Germany did it. Uh, I saw Alexi here earlier, he built his own Tor client a little while ago. And uh, there are quite a few people around the world who are doing that because we describe exactly uh, how you do it and what we think you get and what security properties we aim for. And that means that pretty much every university around the world that has people working on security have people working on Tor, trying to figure out how much security it provides, whether this new attack or defense works. So there's a, a huge community on, around the world of not just researchers, but developers and volunteers and people teaching other people, trainers and so on. One of the neat things about Tor, we started out getting our funding from the US Department of Defense. And from there, we were funded by the Electronic Frontier Foundation. Since then, we've been funded by some other US government groups. There's one called the International Broadcasting Bureau. They're the folks who run Voice of America, Radio Free Cuba, stuff like that. So part of the point here is the diversity of people who care about Tor as reflected in the diversity of where our funding comes from. And we're up to, uh, I think 14 people are being funded by Tor right now to do various things. Not all of them full time, but that's quite a large group compared to five years ago when it was just me. So what else is Tor? We are also a real live 501c3, which is a US nonprofit. Uh, we work on not just developing anonymity tools, but also understanding what anonymity is and teaching the rest of the world uh, why they might care. Uh, we've got some number of users. It's an anonymity system, so I'm not really sure how many. But probably more than 100,000 people are using Tor right now, and probably less than a million people are using Tor right now. So it's gotten to be a, a pretty serious uh, set of people all around the world. Okay, so let's think a little bit about background. What are we trying to build? Uh, what sort of threat model do we have in mind? What's the, the big picture here in terms of what Tor does? 
So we've got Alice over here. She's trying to browse the web or something like that. We've got Bob over here. He's a website or some other destination. And the question is, uh, what sorts of groups are able to, to watch this traffic, to figure out what's going on? Who can actually uh, learn that it's Alice talking to Bob? So one possibility is there's somebody watching Alice's local network. Maybe this is the government of Morocco running their own monopoly telephone company. Maybe it's Comcast in the US watching its users. Maybe it's Deutsche Telekom. Uh, maybe it's uh, uh, someplace in Frankfurt that gets to watch a lot of uh, traffic going back and forth. Or maybe the attacker's on the Bob end. Maybe it's the FBI watching indie media or watching WikiLeaks, and they want to build a list of all the different people uh, in their country or around the world who are reading the website. Uh, or maybe the attacker's uh, the website itself. Maybe it's Bob. Maybe it's CNN, and they're really curious who all their users are, and they want to be able to advertise to them better, so they need to learn uh, where they're coming from. Or maybe it's somewhere in between. Maybe it's a backbone provider, Deutsche Telekom again, AT&T. Uh, maybe it's an intelligence agency that's asked AT&T to be able to monitor the internet for them. Uh, I don't know if you've been following the NSA AT&T wiretap story. So there are a lot of different places where the attacker could be. Um, and if the attacker is in all of these different places, then we're screwed. Tor can't protect against that. We'll get to that in a bit. So what else are we talking about? Uh, Anonymity is not crypto. I talk to a lot of corporations who say, well, yeah, but I use a VPN, so I don't need, to, I don't need this Tor stuff. I don't need privacy. I've already got my security. And encryption is good. You should use encryption. But even if you're using encryption, somebody watching this traffic going back and forth between Alice and Bob still gets to see who's talking, how much they're talking, when they're talking. And that's, that's what most uh, attackers, intelligence agencies, corporations, uh, whoever's looking, that's what most people use these days. Nobody tries to break the encryption. It's all about who is the social hub, who's the person that we should investigate more, and then we can go wiretap them or break into their house or uh, whatever we need to do to attack them next. And then there are some other variations on anonymity that uh, we'd like to provide something stronger than. Uh, there are a lot of plausible deniability designs out there like Freenet and some other peer-to-peer -peer systems where they say, yeah, I was involved in the transaction, somebody asked me for the file, I gave them the file, but you can't prove it was me. Maybe I was relaying it for somebody else. And that, that you can't prove it was me, maybe it works in certain jurisdictions, but in some countries like uh, all the countries I was listing at the beginning of the talk, if you're in uh, China at this point and the bad guys can narrow it down to six people, but they can't prove which one of those six people it is, that's not good enough. We need something stronger. And then there are a bunch of commercial anonymity systems out there, what we call single hop proxies. And the idea is all of the people put their traffic through that single hop, and the, the single hop, that company promises not to screw them. We, we promise we won't look at any of your traffic. OK, OK, we look at all of your traffic. We promise we won't write anything down. OK, OK, we log all of it. We promise we won't tell anybody anything we see. And we want something that's not based on, I could screw you, but I promise not to. We want something that's based on technology, where there is no single location that has the information about which Alice talked to which Bob. So it's not a matter of, here's my policy that says I won't. It's a matter of, here's the technology that makes it so I can't. So part of the fun of working on Tor is the diversity of people who care about it. When I, it's only actually when I'm talking to researchers that I tell them about anonymity. When I'm talking to my parents and my grandparents, I tell them I work on privacy. Because anonymity, that's kind of weird. But privacy, good point. Everybody needs privacy. And when I'm talking to Google and Walmart and other companies, I work on communication security or network security. Because privacy, we're a company. We don't need privacy. But security, yeah, you're right. We need that. And when I'm talking to the US Navy or other government or military groups, I work on traffic analysis resistant communication networks. <laughs> it's It's all exactly the same stuff. It's the same software, it's the same network, it's the same security properties. The question is, how do you phrase it for them in a way that, that makes them realize that they want it? Uh, because they've got lots of security. They, they spend all day buying crappy security from snake oil vendors. So they feel like they've got enough security. But when it comes to traffic analysis resistance, good point. I, I do need to send my, uh, my agent to Israel, and I don't want anybody to know what his affiliation 